Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, send it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and uh, become one of our friends on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Radio Detectives. Before we do get started, if you've not already, I do encourage you to pick up your copy of All I Needed to Know I Learned from Dragnet. It's my latest ebook. In it, I examine the careers and histories of seven more great detectives and police officers uh, from radio, television, and literature, including Poirot, Johnny Dollar, and of course, Joe Friday. And then we take a look at life lessons that can be learned from their great careers. The book is available in all great ebook stores. It is also available by going to store.greatdetectives.net. Well, now it's time for today's episode of The Adventures of Ellery Queen, the original air date, uh, July the 15th of 1944. And the title is... The Foul Tip. The Adventures of Ellery Queen. (laughs) Ellery Queen invites you to match wits with him as he relates another story of a crime he alone unravels. Before revealing the solution, he stops the play, gives you a chance to solve the mystery. Our guest tonight, who will represent you home, armchair detectives, is the talented Hollywood character actor, Mr. Charles Latour. And now, here's Ellery Queen, Master Detective. Thank you, Ernest Chappell, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, we'd like to tell you about a murder that occurred right under our very noses while we calmly enjoyed a ball game. I call it The Adventure of the Foul Tip. Evening. Yeah, that was a sharp movie you just made, Mr. Ames. Here, let me open the door for you. Then look who's here. Sit down. Evening, Mr. Ames. Check your hat. Greg and I'll hold on to it, ma'am. Oh, Welcome to the society club. Can I call Mr. Vincent? Oh, thank you. No, I'm looking for my wife. Eileen? Yes, sir. Uh, this way, sir. Eileen just finished the dance number with her partner. Uh, there he is now. Uh, Reno. I come right away, Edward. That fancy Dan with bare grease on his hair, that's my wife's dancing partner? Uh, yes, Mr. Um, Marino, Mr. Chicken. Excuse me, Mr. The uh, uh, Hollywood yes, Chicken. Enchanté. Me too. Where's my wife, Mr. Marino? Uh, we have just finished the dance. Oh, that Irene. She is not a woman. She's a spirit. It is like dancing with a perfume breeze. Uh, well, where will I find my wife, Mr. Marino? Oh, uh, in her dressing room. Here, right through this door, Mr. Ames. Uh, Mr. Ames, you must see us dance together. It will enchant you. Yeah, because... thank you. Some other time, fella. Uh, but I go in with you. Uh, uh, you can see us dance. Make we... tracks, Mr. Marino. Eh? Uh, you send me away? Yeah, I do. Uh, lover of horses. Imbecile, amante di cavallo. Yeah, Come on, Bernie. Boy. So what does he say? So Bernie says, if I didn't know you were Irene's press agent, I'd have swallowed this publicity on hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> Just the same. He's running it with a two-column head in tomorrow's paper. No. How's that, honey? <laughs> remind me to give you a kiss, Bernie. You remind me to collect it. <coughs> oh. Well, the great chick Ames. Well, hiya, chick. How are you? Even, Mr. Bernie. Well, Irene, here's your old chick in person. You took your sweet time. And what do you mean, sneaking in on me this way? Well, I didn't sneak in, honey. I just opened the door. Oh, yeah? Take it and snoops again. Well, I guess I'll be moseying on out the bar and get a few drinks, friend. Far be it from a press agent to horn in on husband and wife. No, Bernie, stick around. Okay. You're looking mighty pretty, Irene. Thought I'd get to see more of you on this vacation of mine from pictures. Oh, slice that baloney someplace else. You know why I sent for you, Tick. You gonna say yes or aren't you? Now, honey, if you're aiming to start up that divorce talk again... Aiming to start up again? I didn't finish the last time, you lop-eared horses collar. But Irene, girl, you know I got a five-year movie contract. Says I can't get into no scandal. The kids of America would be disappointed in their old chick Divorce is no scandal. 
Stop it, a girl pitched to a stable up there in a ten-gallon hat. Oh, now, honey, I'm real sorry you can't get to see more of me. Oh. You had not got that society fellow, Mr. Vincent, to open this New York nightclub for you. You could go right back on west with me. Riding into the sunset on your saddle horn, I suppose. No, thank you. Do I get my divorce or don't I, you great, big, beautiful movie star, you? Hey, Irene, take it easy. Mr. Bunny, you stay off my range. Okay, okay. Irene... Why do you want a divorce, a powerful bad? Because I'm in love with a man, that's why. Well, I'm a man. Huh? Who? This is none of your rootin' tootin' business. Kind of heard rumors about that, Irene. Supposed to be a man mighty close to you, ain't he? Don't give it no mind, but now, who is he? Oh, stop that phony cowboy hero stuff. I know you from way back to the mother, Ames. I'd for life to a, to a saddle. I want a divorce. Yeah, well, you ain't a getting it. Hey, now, look, Chick, how about you sort of ambling off somewhere and cooling down, huh? And I read. Hey, you look, keep out of this, Bernie. Now, look, you dope. You're going to have the riot squad in here, both of you, and about you. Look here, Chick. I oh, Mr. Vincent. Come on in. Quick, for the love of Mike. What's going on in here, Bernie? Say, but no. Chick, Listen, Mr. Vincent, you got to help me break this up. I read. ready to open fire. She's going to start breaking. Yeah, in a minute. Sure, sure, Bernie. Well, 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 hello, Chick. Well, I'm delighted to see you in New York. Huh? Oh, even Mr. Benson. That's what I get. You see, I come east between pictures to see my own wife. It's no wonder you didn't ride into Grand Central on a pack and you were yodeling home on the rain. I mean, now that Chick's in town, I got a terrific plan. We'll get some great publicity. Oh, go you two ought to be seen together, aren't they, Mr. Vincent? I should say they should, Bernie. Now, look, here's the angle. We make up a party. There's a hot ball game at the field tomorrow. Oh, we'll all sit in one field box. We'll take along Marino, because he's Irene's dance partner. We'll get photographers, reporters. We'll make swell Sunday stuff. Right, Mr. Vincent? Absolutely, Bernie. Chick, what do you say? I don't know, Mr. Vincent. I'm aggravated. He's aggravated. I'd like to know what he's up to aggravated about. Take Irene aside and talk to her, will you? I'll work on it. Right. Irene, come on over here. I don't want to talk to him. Now, come on. Pick me a sport. Bernie's right, you know. An afternoon at the ballpark will do you both good. Well, I don't know. I'm aggravated, Mr. Vincent. But think of the fresh air, Chick. An outdoor man like you shouldn't be cooped up in some New York hot box. What you need is air and sun the wind in your face. Yeah, well... That is a fact, Mr. Vincent. Then you'll do it? Well, Mr. Vincent, I will. Fine. Splendid. Bernie, Chick yeah. says he'll go. Oh, that's great. Great. And we'll all meet outside the ticket booth at the field tomorrow afternoon before the game. I'll have the publicity all set up, Chick. And, uh, Irene's changed her mind, too. Haven't you, Irene, baby? Yeah. I have changed my mind. <laughs> Sorry to be late. Irene, may I kiss your hand? You are edged with it today. Oh, cut it out, Manuel. Bernie, where's Vinny? Vincent will be here. Let us through, Rube. But, Bernie, where are all the photographers? Don't huh? worry, Hanson. You'll get mugged inside. Hit Chick, I'll go first in the line. Oh, that's right. Friendly of you, Mr. Bernie, but I reckon Chick Ames can afford a few baseball tickets. Nothing been doing. Let me hit that window, Chick. Bernie, it's a wonder you didn't get reserved seats in advance, making me stand on a line. I don't see you fighting to get to the ticket window first, Manuel. When two Bulgarians argue over mere money, my beautiful Manuel Marino looks on with scorn. Yes. <laughs> oh, there's Vincent inside the gate. Hey, Vinny! Hey, Mr. Vincent! Howdy! Oh, hello, hello there. Hey, here, here, Bernie. Don't buy any tickets. Huh? I'm just for them. Let these people through the gate, will you please? Here we are. Tickets for box 13. All right. This way, people. Boy, block a score cards and pencils here. Yes, sir. I'm ready. Hey, this is the day 15. Isn't that Ames? Ames, the cowboy movie star. I'm Mr. Ames. Give me the autograph. Give me the autograph. Make a pretty bow to your public. Now, 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 folks. Be nice now. I'm just a C in the ball game. No autograph. <laughs> Did you hear what Mr. Ames said? No autograph. Now, one side. Come on, Marino. Stick a leg. Uh, who wants to get the publicity today? A cowboy or Marino and Irene, huh? Oh, nuts. Mr. Vincent, which box was it again? Box 13, Bernie. All right. Here, this way, Irene. Box number 13. Hey, that's an unlucky number. And there, ladies and gentlemen, you have the beginning of our mystery. 
When the number 13 crops up, something's bound to happen. And before anything else happens, here's a number by Paul Laval and his orchestra. <laughs> field boxes of the jammed ballpark. A typical New York Sunday crowd is watching fielding practice. Box 14. Here you are, Mr. Queen. Thanks, sir. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Mr. Queen. Nicky, sit here. Dad. Well, well, I didn't think well, it was a good idea to come to the ball game fine, today. Man. And Sessie, you look younger already. Yes, man. Well, Beanie, yeah. you still think that punk team of yours is going to win today? Thanks, Jay. I'm the sure inspector with Clobber Pension. I've got four bits that says they don't score two earned runs off. <laughs> You're on, sucker. Oh, where's the score for? Well, what's the lineup? Oh, see that kill? Well, bong, bong, Spectre. You see Max suck that ball to deep center field. They'll murder those bush leaguers of yours today. Ah, they all look like Babe Ruth and Francis. <laughs> Well, that's my old chick. Put your arm around him, Irene. Okay. Always. All right. Anyway, look at those photographers. Ellery, if the movie starts, they're going to the next box. That girl, Irene, that's his wife. Oh, there's Mr. Vincent. He's the millionaire society man who opened the nightclub for us. Oh, who cares? Come on, play ball. Sure, play ball. Yeah, come, on, come on, come on. Ellery, they're the ones we saw outside the ticket booth, remember? They say Irene's been trying to get a divorce from Mr. Kane for a year, but he won't give her one. She's in love. Some people say with Mr. Vincent, though one commonest thing that it might be Bernie or Presley. Nikki, I'm in love, too, with a ball game this afternoon. Uh-uh, oh, practice yeah. is over. Grab it, they're leaving the field. We missed the practice. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> what is this, a ball game or a personal appearance by that he-man of Hollywood? <laughs> Look at those fans fight to get his autograph. Now, now, one at a time, please. Mr. Ames, do you want an autograph for these people? Well, I'll take just six. Uh, just I'll take my number. Mr. Ames says to take six. 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 No, no more. Please, don't I don't think Mrs. Ames enjoys her husband's popularity very much, judging from the expression on her face. Mm-hmm. They should be seeing a ball game together. She's trying to... Uh, but what do I care? Play ball! Beautiful woman, that Irene. Brother, you ain't exaggerating. All right, you're right, Tom. Mr. Ames takes six and he's given six. Now stand back. Will you everybody please, back? Please, get away from Mr. Ames' box, you... Uh, will you... Sorry. <laughs> Ellery, oh. take a look at that hombre coming toward box 13. A cowboy with a guitar. Mmm, he's handsome. Where? Who... <laughs> What's baseball coming to, anyway? Arizona! Box, you old bow-legged coyote. Hi, Arizona. I reckon you remember my wife here, Irene, huh? I reckon I couldn't forget her, Chick. Howdy, man. Hello, 
Arizona. Uh, Long time no see, sir. Come and sit by me, sugar. Oh, oh thank you, ma'am. I've been traveling around sick here. Sort of keep me cheerful, you know. Me and my guitar. How'd you find my box, Arizona? Just followed the herd, chick. No you'd be where the autograph mavericks were thick. Ha <laughs> ha, you old fat of men. Arizona, shake hands with these folks. I remember sure. that Arizona Yankee and his pal. Chick needs Arizona a salary to play the guitar for him when he's feeling low. Oh. <laughs> well, he does. <laughs> oh, I'm feeling powerful off my feet, Arizona. Sing me one of them sad songs of yours, will you? Reckon I will. Oh, He's going to sing here. Oh, that's mighty pretty, Arizona. Yes, sir. Uh, the mighty pretty. Bernie, this is humiliating. I'm not going to sit in the middle of the day to pull up. Look, they got his mad head picture. No, Irene, this is great stuff for you. Hey, put your back. Oh, now what, Nicky? It's Chick Angelry. He fell out of his suit. He's sick or something. Get back in the mail, will you? Chick, for heaven's sake, for nothing. It's Chick! We better have a squint at this, baby. One touch, please. Oh, wait, please. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. We've got to send to the clubhouse. Call a doctor, somebody. Baby, throw these people away. Uh, come on, one side, one more next. Bye. All right, take them out. Easy now. Ellery, do you suppose anything is really wrong? You mean foul play, Nicky? Well, considering the setup. That is a possibility. Oh, Nicky, I came here to see a ball game, and by the babe, I'm seeing it. Come on, you bums, play ball! <laughs> Back in the clubhouse. Uh, my God. How's she gone? I've my poor bed back. Oh, look at that scoreboard. Ah, strike. Oh, my boy. Yes, he's got it, Sergeant, but it's only the fifth inning. First to that bomb, Carberry, can it, the Jack? But, Sergeant, what about the game? Oh, oh, uh, check that. Bring your stuff up. Oh, Lord. He was a natural death. No, a poison. Doctor's just examined and Chick was bumped. Now watch this guy clobber. He likes him down the alley. Mm-hmm. Ellie, what did you do? Seriously. Well, well, Sergeant, let's have the details. Uh, uh, oh, uh, poison through the mouth. The chick didn't eat or drink and think for an hour. And the doctor says it was quick poison, so the inspector figures he took the stuff right here in the field box. What did I tell you? Clobber, I tired of We'll take your record, Sergeant. Ellie, gee, what on earth? He's climbing onto his chair. Your attention, please. See this roll of bills? I'll give five dollars for every autograph Chick Ames signed in box 13 there before this game. Five genuine American bucks, gentlemen. Come and get it. Mike, so are you gone? Not right now. One at a time. Don't crowd. Let's see it. Yes, there's one. Here's your five. Now, let's see that autograph, please. Mm-hmm. Here's your five dollars. All right, now. There we are. Come on out here. Let's see it. Oh, uh-huh. Hey, listen, Mr. Queen. I'm sorry, but you can't start a riot. Oh, the usher. Stand by, usher. Anybody else? There should be one other autograph. What are you doing? What are you doing, sir? He's buying back Chick's autograph. That sunstroke, Inspector. Call the wagon. Oh, shut up, Dealey. Son, what's the idea? Dealey says Ames was poisoned by mouth. Hadn't eaten or drunk anything recently. It happened right here in Box 13. So it's obvious Ames must have been poisoned by one of the pencils. An autograph hound handed him to write with. By one of the pencils? Yes, sir. Ames is notorious for his habit of sucking the point of a pencil. Lord knows it's been publicized enough. He sucked every pencil off at him before he scrawled his name. Well, the pencils had a poison tip. But the killer's one of those five guys who just showed up to sell back the autograph. There, you with a straw case. No, no, Sergeant, no. Let those men alone. If any of the five was guilty, you don't suppose he'd be fool enough to show up to you. There were six. The sixth one stayed away. The missing one's the killer, all right. Usher. Yes, Dr. Queen? What did that sixth palooka look like, remember? Why, well, yes, sir. It was a kid, a little boy. A what? What a deduction, Mr. Queen. A boy. Eh. Uh, that's that. Go on back to the clubhouse if you want to question these people, son. That's not that bad. The secret of Ames' death lies in the hands of that boy. We must find him. Now, Sergeant, here's what I want you to do. Will kindly proceed to the clubhouse with the autograph 
He will receive a genuine Chick Ames six-shooter, a genuine Chick Ames cowboy suit, and a genuine signed photo of Chick Ames. Attention, please. If the boy who signed Chick Ames... <laughs> Yes, sir, Miss Queen. Any sign of Sergeant Beale in that kid yet, officer? No, sir, Miss Queen. Officer? Yes, sir, Miss Queen. What's the score? Score to start. Favor the home team. Boy, this proper is hot. May he fry in his own lard. Uh, no sign of Beale in the boy yet, Dad. Carry on. His name? How do I know you didn't slip your husband a poison pencil with your own dainty white hands, huh? He stood in your way. You're in love with another man. Chick wouldn't divorce him. I didn't poison him. I didn't. All I know is all of a sudden he fell off his feet in the boat. Who's this man you're in love with? That's none of anybody's business, including the police. Is it Mr. Vincent, eh? You opened that nightclub for you, Irene. He's your angel, isn't he? No. No, I mean, it's not me. Inspector, this is all a high hand, isn't it? I'll high hand too later, Vincent. <laughs> well, then, Irene, is it this loudmouth press agent of yours, Bernie? Hey, now, wait a minute. There's nothing between Irene and me except business. Oh, no, 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 it's not that. It's Emmanuel Marino, your dance partner. She's lying her head off, Elvis. It's one of the men she sees constantly. It must be. Oh, Dad, here's Sergeant Feely with the boy. Come on, come on, kid. I want to see this man's ball game, too, you know. There's your criminal, my show, 11 years old. Come here, son. Don't be afraid. What's your name? Who's afraid? My name's Montgomery and no crap. Where's the genuine Chick Ames six shooter the announcer said? And the cowboy suit? And the signed picture of Chick Ames? I gotta get back to my seat. We all do, Montgomery, but first let me have the autograph Chick Ames gave you. Well, I got it right here on my scorecard. But how do I know this ain't the old double score? Hey, wait! What's the idea of grabbing my pencil? Relax, Montgomery, I never grabbed. Is this the pencil you handed my Ames to autograph the scorecard with? Oh, uh, Montgomery, be nice, Montgomery. Bad. Now let's give it a pencil. Oh, you see. You're enough to establish it. Pencil that poison names, all right. Sonny, where'd you get this? Let me out of here. Oh, now, Montgomery, come on. You answer these gentlemen's questions and they'll let you go right back to your baseball game. But I don't know nothing, lady. I come down to the game all by myself. And I bought a ticket and I just got inside the gate. When a man comes over to me and says, Listen, kid, you know Chick Ames? So I said, Sure. Everybody knows Chick Ames from the movies. So he says, Well, look, Chick Ames is going to be at the game today in box 13. So you take this scorecard and pencil and get his autograph for me on a kind of on kind of bicycle. Then the guy says, I'll meet you right here after the game and give you five dollars for the autograph. So I got it, that's all. But I'd rather have a chick aimed gun and stuff any day. Give me it and let me go. What'd this man look like, Montgomery? Oh, he was wearing a big coat and a hat pulled down over his face and dark sunglasses or something. Wouldn't you know? Disguise. Montgomery, how about his voice? Think you'd recognize it? Well, he kept a handkerchief over his mouth while he was talking to me. And sometimes his voice was low and sometimes squeaky. Sounded awful funny. He must have been sick. Where's my sick aim gun and cowboy suit? Uh, Mr. Bernie, take this boy's name and address and see that he gets what I promised him. Sure thing, Mr. Queen. Hey, Arizona, what are you digging me in the ribs for? I guess that's sort of old Arizona's job, Mr. Bernie. Now that old chick's gone west for the last round up. Come here, boy. Hey, you a real cowboy? I bet you're a phony. Better take my address. My name is Mike. Imagine Montgomery. using a little boy as an instrument of a murder. Whoever that man was, he's a monster. Disguise. Face, figure, voice. Kill his gun by now. hundred miles away. And even if he's still in the park, how are you going to pick out one guy in a crowd of 40 fouls? Uh, just a minute. Officer. Here's the McQueen. What's the score now? Hey. Hide right up, McQueen. Four, four, and eight. Coming up. Hide right up and going tonight. Thanks. I've got to talk fast, but I expect to see the end of this game. Talk fast? What do you mean? Of course, Nicky. Dad, get these people out of here. I'll tell you the name of the person who handed Montgomery that poison pencil to give to Chick Ames. I'll tell you who really murdered Ames. And there, ladies and gentlemen, you have the mystery. Have you figured out an answer to it? Well, suppose you compare your solution with that of our guest for tonight. Nikki, introduce our guest to our home armchair detective. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest tonight is Mr. Charles Latour, the famous Hollywood character actor. Incidentally, Mr. Latour is really an old friend of us on the Ellery Queen program because before he went to Hollywood, he was a member of the cast on many an Ellery Queen mystery. 
Charlie, it's nice to see you again. How are you? Fine, Evelyn. Couldn't be better. Oh, that's great. You know, Charlie, it seems every time I see a picture, you're in it. Passage to Marseille, Song of Bernadette. And he's in Harry Ape now, Ah, oh, yes, I keep him busy, all right. Fifty-one pictures in the last 26 months. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Charlie, I, I hope you haven't forgotten your old training in solving Ellery Queen mysteries. Ah, uh, now, look here, Ellery. You solved the cases. I was the murderer, remember? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, let's try this one anyway. Charlie, who do you think gave Montgomery the poison pencil? That is... Who really killed Ames? Well, I really think Arizona did it. On the face, it would look like either the press man would do it or the proprietor not to want to lose their featured star. But I think Arizona was a bit jealous of the cowboy star and he wanted to break in pictures and he stoked all this out by himself. And this was a chance and I think he did it. Oh, thank you, Mr. Latour. We'll give you the solution to tonight's mystery in just a minute. And while you're trying to figure out your solution, here are Paul Laval and the orchestra to keep you from concentrating. <laughs> Don't waste time. Now, here's how it works out. The killer of Ames, that is, the one in disguise who handed Montgomery the poison tint pencil, told the kid that Chick Ames would be at the ball game and that Ames would be sitting in box 13. Question. How did the killer know that Ames was going to be at the game? Which means it was all planned before Ames got there. How did the killer know that Ames was going to sit in box 13? That is clear. It means the murderer knew where the party would be sitting before they got to the park. Well, well, who knew? Hurry. Ames and Bernie had a friendly argument in front of the ticket windows as to who'd buy the tickets. That means Bernie didn't know in advance where they'd be sitting. Sure. And Irene even cracked to Bernie that it was a wonder he hadn't got reserved seats in advance. I chose none of them, though. And yet, one of them did know, Sergeant. The one who gave Montgomery the pencil before the Ames party got to the park. The one who was inside the gate with the already purchased tickets when the others arrived. The only person in that park, or in the world, who knew in advance in which box Ames would be sitting. Vincent. Vincent, to open that nightclub for Irene. Yes. It was Vincent who arrived early in disguise, bought the tickets for box 13, accosted Montgomery, gave him the poison pencil and scorecard, instructed the boy where he'd find Ames sitting later, then simply discarded the disguise and waited for the rest of the party to show up. Motive, to free Irene so he could marry her. Now, gangway. Where are you running, time? To see the end of the ball game. Hi, Maestro! Wait for the cop! And there, ladies and gentlemen, you have the solution. We wish to thank Mr. Latour for being our guest armchair detective this evening. And thank you, Ellery Queen, for solving the mystery. Now, while Paul DeVal and the orchestra are hanging around with some unplayed notes staring them in the face, let's listen to some more music.
This is the Armed Forces Radio Service. with otrwesterns.com where we stream live old time radio westerns 24 hours a day 7 days a week with a special twist you select the tracks that get to be played we've got a thousand different episodes from shows like Gunsmoke, Tales of the Texas Rangers, Escape, Gene Autry and many more come check us out at otrwesterns.com slash live again that's otrwesterns.com slash live You're listening to The Great Detectives of Old Time Radio with Adam Graham. And now, let's get back into the show. Welcome back. Well, some people might say Ellery uh, asserted too much influence and control over a police investigation. But in his defense, he had a ball game to get back to. And that's always a good reason. I really liked it uh, with the... uh, uh, music. It's not my favorite Armed Forces Radio Services orchestra, but it is a nice little uh, bit. And it's what they did because uh, when soldiers and uh, were overseas, uh, our service personnel, uh, we did not want the government of the United States to be selling them a specific commercial product. So the commercial appeals were replaced often with music. And later on, as we heard with, uh, in uh, Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, they were replaced with public service announcement. Uh, at any rate, we do now turn to some listener comments and uh, feedback. And uh, this one uh, comes t- uh, from Mike regarding uh, Ellery Queen, The Adventure of the Hanging a- Acrobat, the Dunamont television show. Wow, great show. Old, yes. Creaky, yes. But utterly charming. Post more if you can find any. Thanks. Well, thanks so much, Mike, and uh, we'll be doing it next weekend. I should note that we'll have a different Ellery Queen. Richard Hart, who played Ellery Queen uh, in The Adventure of the uh, uh, Hanging Acrobat, actually died not too uh, within a month of that episode being aired. And uh, he died of... Uh, of uh, coronary oculism um, and uh, was replaced in the lead by Lee Bowman. So be sure and listen to that next or watch that, excuse me, next Sunday. Uh, We'll be back with another audio episode of Ellery Queen uh, next Tuesday. And uh, then uh, tomorrow, the adventures of Philip Marlowe. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives.com. 